everybody. Welcome to International Ball. Uh, today I have the great pleasure of uh, hosting yet another guest. Um, and uh, this, uh, uh, of course, uh, no other but the uh, two-time Olympian, uh, former WNBA player, Canadian women's national team player who helped us win gold at the Pan Am Games in 2015, if you remember, and uh, who has uh, been reporting the games for FIBA uh, at the 2021 FIBA Eurobasket Games uh, now in uh, France. Uh, Shana, great to be with you. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I was in France. I just arrived in Valencia, Spain for the uh, for the finals. So the tournament was split into two countries to, uh, you know, help, uh, obviously help with costs, but also uh, to just, you know, have more, have more visibility of the game. So no, it's doing of good. Of course, and thanks for that update. Uh, uh, so, uh, you know, uh, let, let's go back a little bit. Uh, you grew up in Hamilton, you got into basketball, playing at the youth level, and then journey started there. Um, how about sharing a little bit about that? Yeah, so I grew up in Hamilton, go Hammertown. Uh, you know, went to high school at uh, Westdale, Westdale Collegiate, and we actually won OFSA, I believe, my grade nine or 10 year. It's a long time ago now. Um, from there, you know, started playing for the youth national teams, the uh, young women's competition, U17, going to, you know, America's championships and things like that. Uh, we were not good. We didn't qualify uh, for anything. Uh, you know, now there's a U17 World Cup. There's a U19 World Cup. We were not involved. Those actually weren't around back in the day, but we would not have qualified either. So, and then after that, yeah, you know, took the path of being recruited to uh, to a school in the U.S., went to the University of Utah, had an absolutely amazing, wonderful career. Uh, with another Canadian, Kim Gaucher, former Kim Smith. And you go pro after that and continue to, to play for Canada and professionally. And obviously, the older you get, the harder it is to compete at a great level. So at one point, you have to hang them up. And that's what I've done. And here I am now. And uh, you've continued with work. Uh, obviously, you're also uh, involved in coaching in, in France, uh, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I moved on. Uh, I was, uh, while I was still playing my last year, um, I knew it was going to be my last year, but I, I hadn't really said it out loud because it's really hard to step away from something that you love. Um, I was offered an assistant coaching job with a uh, medium-sized club in France, but a team that had some ambitions and I accepted. I didn't really know if I was going to like coaching. So I was a little hesitant. I knew I wanted to get involved into commentating, which I had already been doing. Um, but yeah, no, it, it's worked out really well. We won the league and it's a very, very good league in France. We have a lot of actually, we have a lot of Canadians who play over in France. Uh, in my opinion, it's one of the top leagues in Europe professionally. So yeah, we won this year. Uh, still celebrating that here and here and there because uh, it, it is a really big deal. Of course, uh, what a beautiful transition winning the local league championship. And there are what four other Canadians, correct, on on, this, on that team? We had yeah, we had Catherine Plouffe and we had Miranda Am. Okay, so, so two others, so three including myself. Yeah, it's it's you know it's. It's kind of interesting. I mean, that's a big deal as well. So, yeah, it was. It's amazing, and it was amazing because I I played with those two players as well with Canada. We represented Canada together. So, to experience something different with them, um, you know, a little bit of role changing. I was a uh, now their coach, but it, it was incredible. That's brilliant. Uh, so let's uh, get into the games. The twenty twenty one. Uh, FIBA uh, Eurobasket for women. Um, so, uh, you know, how, how do you, how did, how did the tournament start? And, uh, you know, how, who are some of the teams that surprised you thus far? So this is my third Eurobasket. My first was back in 2017. Uh, so 17, 19, and now 21. Here we are. 
And typically group phase action, you know who's going to win. And they normally win by 20 odd points. Like you just, you, you know, that happens. And this year has been completely different. I would say it's one of the most exciting uh, tournaments in a Eurobasket, at least from since I've been around. It's been not just my group that I had in Strasbourg, France, but also down here in Valencia, Spain. There's been upsets. There's been people who you maybe didn't know their name before, but trust me, you're going to know their name after this tournament, stepping up. I would have to say I had the privilege of watching uh, and calling the games for Bosnia and Herzegovina. And I mean, when you think of Bosnia, I'm not sure you think about women's basketball and they have already made history. You know, they they did have a quarterfinal loss to France, but they made France nervous. Um, and now they actually, they, they play tomorrow against Sweden. And if they win, they will move on to the first ever. I mean, they've already made history. It's been a first for, for this country in a lot of events. A lot of things have happened in this tournament. If they win tomorrow, they have an opportunity to qualify for a the FIBA Women's World Cup, which will happen uh, next year in Sydney, Australia. So that would be absolutely incredible. And this is sport. Like, it's amazing. Like, no one was talking about this country before they arrived. Yes, indeed. And, uh, you know, I think uh, just uh, looking uh, – you know the overall view, of the, you know, uh, to the women's basketball. I mean, yet still fighting for equality. Yet still, uh, uh, you know, progressively trying to, uh, uh, you know, to achieve uh, higher income uh, for women. What are your thoughts when it comes to the subject? And and you know, you yourself, you've been, you've you've had a very interesting journey uh, to mm -hmm. gotten to the position you are. I mean, it's a stepping stone for sure. I do think we're stepping into the right direction. You've seen the the, the salary caps moving up in the WNBA. The same thing for the most part is happening over in Europe. Um, I can speak for France. I know that French salaries are slowly moving up. Are they comparable to the men's? No, but at least they are moving in a direction where maybe we can get there. It's a tough ride. Um, absolutely. I think, uh, you know, we, we deserve the same and we, but it all starts with visibility. And if you don't have visibility and if you're not able to watch our games for free, uh, no one pays attention. So, uh, you know, I, I appreciate someone like Natalia Chanwa for Canada who, she has something to say. She's going to say it and she's not going to hold back. And it, it's helping. It's helping, you know, Black Lives Matter. It's helping uh, women in sport. All of those issues, you're seeing a lot more uh, female athletes stepping up. And, uh, you know, it's good for the sport. Um, it's good for humanity. And hopefully we'll see some changes from it. Uh, hopefully so. Um uh, so, uh, you know, what what are some of your expectations in terms of the games that are coming up uh, for tomorrow? Uh, if we were to get you to do some fortune telling, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I I my predictions are already out the window because because of upsets and whatnot. Spain lost in the quarterfinals which they are the, you know, they've won the last two Euro baskets. They lost in the quarterfinals, amazing game to Serbia because they had a bad loss in group phrase to Belarus. So, you know, they didn't finish first and they had a tougher time getting to the semis. So you have the number four ranked team in the world losing in the quarterfinals of a Euro basket. That's just how crazy this Euro basket has been. So I think tomorrow's big game. So we have the uh, qualification games and you have to finish top six to have an opportunity to go to the Olympic quali uh, no, sorry, the World Cup qualification tournament, which will be held next uh, February around that time. And first up, you have Sweden taking on Bosnia. I'm going with Bosnia. I just I, I followed them in France. And I'm following them here, and I'm riding on that Cinderella story for them. Um, I think they have it. I think they have a, a you know, uh, 
why not? Why not them? You always love this great story and this unexpected team rising that no one would have guessed. Uh, then we have Spain taking on Russia. And we've talked for a few years now how, I mean, Russia, Soviet Union, former Russia, they used to be so strong. They dominated women's basketball. And even in, you know, the 2000s to, I would say, around 2010, 2011, Russia were always contending for medals everywhere. And they've dropped off the map. This team is very young here, but they are very, very talented. And I think they're a team that can definitely beat Spain, which would be crazy to think about that Spain might not even be at the World Cup next summer. But I also think it proves that, you know, Russia's back and they're going to be competing for medals at uh, major competitions. So we'll see. So those are our qualification games, classification, sorry. And then moving on, we have a semifinals. France is going to take on Belarus. And I said from the beginning of this tournament, this is France's tournament to lose. So right away, they should be winning. With the depth of talent that they have, there's no reason for them not to win gold. So they haven't won until since I believe it was 2001. 99? No, no, no. Sorry. 2009. Uh, which is pretty disappointing for France and the kind of team that they have. So in well, my here. opinion, if France doesn't wrong, win, there's – Right. It's uh, it's dangerous. And, of course, for uh, a country uh, of such uh, – you know, uh, who has such a level, high level of professional women's league, and not just women's, also men's league. Exactly. Multiple different, multiple different divisions. Uh, uh, so uh, I'm sure expectation is very high. Yeah, no, exactly. So in my opinion, they're beating Belarus tomorrow and they're moving on to the finals. And then the last game is probably going to be one of the most interesting. It's Serbia taking on Belgium. And anyone who enjoys watching basketball, you need to you need to tune in and watch this game because these are two teams who know how to play basketball. They're talented, they share the ball, they move the ball, they're aggressive. You know, certain moments during the day, during the game, they have key players step up. Uh, in this tournament, Belgium actually just um, passed the the team assist record: thirty five assists in a single game for one team. So it shows you how unselfish, but also how good your teammates are around you because everyone's able to 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 score. So I think that's probably going to be uh, the game of the day. Of course, Emma Messiman, who was uh, who had a tremendous last game, I think, uh, and also is one of the leading scorers. Correct? Yeah, I think in the last game she had something like thirty-three points. Um, she's ranked uh, second in scoring in this tournament. Every game is a double-double. She, she's incredible. I, you know, I've said for a few a few years now. I think she's one of the best players in the game at this moment. She's so fundamental. I'm not sure she actually makes mistakes defensively, offensively, and she knows how to step up when her team needs her. So I I, I imagine a big game from her no matter what because it's Emma Messiman. <laughs> Fascinating. Uh, hold that thought. I want to uh, drop our uh, social media address here on the page and uh, we're going to come back and talk a little bit about Canada. So uh, what are your thoughts about the direction of uh, Canadian basketball is going so far? Uh, I mean, you mentioned earlier, you know, uh, the women's game, you know, they were still progressing when you entered the game or before going to college. But then, of course, you helped us win the gold medal game against U.S., beating U.S. at home in a sold-out game in 2015 at the Pan Am. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's been such a long time. But, uh, you know, how do you see it from outside in at the moment? Uh, you know, I am I am quite a few years re removed now. I stopped in 2016. So I, I think their performance at this year's America Cup, which uh, just ended last week, is is disappointing. And I'm sure that the, the players and the coaching staff are disappointing. I know that's not the team that they're sending to to the Olympics. You know, you have your WNBA players coming in. 
But then on the same hand, you know, I'm I'm here at a Eurobasket and their WNBA players are are here participating for their teams. So, it, you know, what, at what point is are you really going to sit down and make the commitment and say, OK, we're going for a medal. What do we have to do to do that? Um, and, you know, I think it's great. We have a lot of young talent coming in uh to to the senior national team in Canada but young talent doesn't only win games you know you need a very good balance with veterans you need players who are are unselfish and are willing to you know play the role of kind of the grunt player you know the person who's diving for loose balls taking one for the team and things like that so I watched uh, uh, quite a few of their games at AmeriCup, and I I thought they seemed a little out of sorts. Do I think that's the kind of team and the kind of play that we're going to see at, in Tokyo? Absolutely not. I know the players that are coming in, and I know how good they are, and I've played with them. So I think it will be a turnaround. But at this level, you need time together. Canada has been in a very, very unfortunate position. These European teams, they got together in November. They got together in February. Canada were not able to do that. And unfortunately, at the America Cup, I think that showed. So so we'll see. I mean, I have high hopes every time I see Canada play. I think they have the talent. I think that they have the veterans around them. Can they put it all together? Um. What are your thoughts about the potential of another w, uh, a WNBA team here in Canada? Do you think it would work? I think it would be great. I mean, we talked about this back in the early 2000s, eh? When they went, I think they, there was a conversation, if I remember correctly, but they went with the football team, the TFC, which right. has been a success and Toronto loves it. And, you know, soccer, sorry, soccer, not football, <laughs> not football, soccer, we call it in Canada. Mm -hmm. I've been in Europe too long. Um, and I think it's been great for the city. And you've seen, but there were talks of a WNBA team when that was kind of all happening as well. I 100% think it would be something good. I think it would be great for women's basketball in Canada to have that visibility and you can't tell me flying to Toronto is any heart is more difficult from flying from New York to LA, you know, I mean, it's not that much further exactly uh, for the WNBA to figure out travel arrangements and things like that. I absolutely would be all for that. Um, I think it's something that, you know, you always kind of hear, Oh, it could happen. It couldn't. Let's just do it. Give it a try. See how it goes. Yes, indeed. Uh, well, I mean, Canada's women's, uh, you've always had, you know, worked with very uh, little resources, any budget, if any, but yet you've <laughs> made something of it. I mean, despite men's, <laughs> which were very privileged of a lot of opportunities. And, uh, you know, uh, maybe maybe a league, uh, you, uh, you know, maybe a, a, a women's league here in Canada may be sustainable. What are your thoughts on that? I think a women's league would be very difficult because of how big our country is. Mm -hmm. um, travel is long in Canada. And if you don't have direct flights into places, and if you don't have the money to fly charter or to fly comfortably, it would definitely be tough. I mean, Australia does it. If Australia can do it, I guess, why can't we? They do have a league during the, you know, during the women's professional year season. Mm -hmm. I, I, I would, I think where I would like to see is a start with a WNBA team. Because I really think being able to sell out a couple times a week or, you know, get a good fan base is, is very much doable, especially in a big city like Toronto. Well, uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to inviting you back uh, for more episodes here because I want to pick your brain in terms of the women's <laughs> game and that direction is going. Alongside with wonderful work that you're doing out there in FIBA covering the Eurobasket 2021 for women's. Uh, 
you know, so what, what is next for um, uh, for Shauna? I mean, uh, right now you're in Spain and you're covering the women's game. And uh, uh, what do you do, uh, I guess, uh, moving on to your next uh, item in the list for the summer, if not next season? Yeah, so heading uh, back home to France. I live in France permanently. Um, obviously, COVID-related reasons. I actually haven't been back to Canada in two years. So I do have my, uh, my family coming to visit me in a couple of days after I arrive back. So I'm incredibly excited for that because it's been way too long, like many people have uh, experienced. So I'm going to enjoy the month of July with them. And then uh, we, we start back up with our professional team kind of mid-August um, around then. And life starts all over again. It's just you know, it's kind of a little cycle with some breaks here and there. Uh, I'm not going to do any more FIBA events. Uh, I was invited to, but after a difficult year, um, and I really wanted to 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 see family, so I kind of had to make that decision, which was a very easy decision. But I, I, you know, season starts, and then I'll hopefully be back uh, with FIBA for the women's uh, FIBA World Cup down under in Sydney, Australia, uh, next summer. Wow, uh, I, I'm looking forward to that. I'm I'm a big fan of the women's game, and of course, following your career since the you know you helped Canada win gold here, I, I never forget that. You know, uh, and of course, uh, you know, uh, I want to thank you for this opportunity to bring you on live here and speaking with me and us. Uh, looking forward to uh, also your contribution uh, about the women's game here, which we lack tremendously on international. <laughs> <quality>. <laughs> So thank you for your leadership. <laughs> yes, definitely, Tom. It was a pleasure. And, you know, as soon as you said, well, I kind of want to grow the women's. Absolutely. I'm all about growing the women's basketball game. I think it's a, I think it's a beautiful, beautiful sport and more people should be watching and more young kids should, uh, you know, be watching and say, oh, I want to do that because uh, it's a great sport and uh, I want as many people playing as possible. So. That's brilliant. Uh, well, there you have it, folks. Uh, Shauna Thornburn, uh, two-time Olympian, former WNBA player, uh, former Canadian national team player here. Uh, thank you so much again. Uh, I wish you good health and continued success there, Shauna. Let's talk soon. Great. Thank you. All right.